G'day Midget Nerds, so finally after two introductory videos to the topic, we can safely say that we can begin our first official video on physics. Now, if you watch the other introductory videos, you'll know that in part one of this season, we'll be exploring motion and how to represent it. So to begin, a good point, a good starting point for this video, should I say, would be, what is motion? Motion dominates our lives, whether it's running after camels, running races, or traveling around the sun. Motion is everywhere and therefore it is an important part of physics. The definition of motion we'll use in this series is that motion is the change of an object's position or orientation with time. Which is a little self-explanatory, like for example, say I'm at this phone box at one point in time, then hopped on a horse and traveled to my castle later on. This is an example of me in motion. Similarly, if I sat I, if I sit in this swivel chair, pardon me, and spin it like this, although I'm not moving very far, my orientation is changing and my body is facing in different directions. And therefore, this is another example of motion. The path of this motion is then known as the trajectory. Okay, so now that we've cleared th that out of the way, let's take a look at the different types of motion we might encounter in physics. There are four main forms of motion in physics. First one is known most commonly as straight line motion or linear motion. This type of motion focuses on motion along a straight line, also known as one dimensional motion, as it only moves in one dimension. This type of motion will be the focus of the first part of this series. Examples of this motion include rockets blasting into space and cars dri driving along roads. But it, there is something special to note here. One, direction, one dimensional motion or straight line motion can occur along the vertical and the horizontal axes. Motion number two, which we'll examine more later, and by the way, throughout this course, we will be looking and discussing all these types of motions, is circular motion. Circular motion is motion that travels along a circular path, such as a Ferris wheel or roller coasters. In the example of a Ferris wheel, where the object in question would most likely be the cart, with the people in it, the object then follows a full 360 degree motion path around the middle of the wheel. The roller coaster, on the other hand, doesn't travel a complete circle, but does travel along a curved path, which is similar to traveling along part of a circle. The next type of motion is my personal favorite, being projectile motion. Projectile motion refers to motion when an object travels with two motions, particularly vertical and horizontal motions. An example of this motion can be seen in cannons. The ball moves upwards and across from the cannon and follows a parabolic trajectory. This type of trajectory is unique to this type of motion. And finally, the last type of motion we'll examine in season one is rotational motion. Rotational motion, as you may have guessed, is motion where an object spins around an axis, or in other words, rotates, such as the earth or spinning tops. However, for the purposes of part one of this season, we'll only be looking at motion along a straight line. Okay, so what part one is about? Making a motion diagram. Motion diagrams are diagrams that display the motion of an object over time. So here's an example of motion. As time goes on, the object moves and makes a displacement, and the animation here moves and makes a displacement. And the animation here is about one and a half seconds long. Now say I took a photo of this motion four times over the course of this motion, and each photo was taken at equally spaced time intervals. So in this case, every 0.375 seconds. And let's say the photos came out similar to this. What can we see in this motion? Well, the first and most important thing that strikes me is the spaces between the car are equally spaced. And since the spaces between the car are taken between the same amount of time intervals, and the car is moving an equal amount of distance per frame, as you might want to call it, the car must be moving at a constant speed, which we observed in the video. Here are some other examples of motion diagrams. The this first picture shows a soccer ball. There is only one image of it in one position. The object is station stationary because it has not moved at all. The next image shows us a car. The spaces between the car become steadily closer over time. This car therefore must be slowing down as the distance travelled decreases over the same time periods. 
This image shows us a person running. Each position of her motion increases over time. This motion shows us she is speeding up. Now what is interesting about the diagrams is we don't know the speeds of the objects. We don't know exactly the time period between spaces. But we don't need to as long as we know the object has moved and how far it moved in equally placed time intervals. Now I pose to you a question. Which of these cars is moving faster? Car A or car B? Assume both diagrams are showing the same amount of time between frames. The correct answer, the correct answer would be this one because the spaces between the intervals are larger. This means the car has travelled a further distance in the same amount of time the, car, the other car has. But the thing is, these diagrams are a little hard to draw. You know, with having to draw car after car or person after person in a diagram. This can be time consuming. However, there is another way. Let's take, take a look at those diagrams from earlier. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn these diagrams we just made into particle model diagrams. To draw a motion diagram using the particle model, it is as simple as adding points to the center of mass of the object in question. This is what the particle model looks like with the previous examples. Also, in the particle model, and you should probably also do this in all diagrams, is include a time label with numbers with a unit of measurement, such as minutes or seconds, such as this diagram. So that concludes this episode of Physics, Motion 1.1. In the next episode, we'll explore coordinate systems and displacement and how this is useful for solving 1D motion problems. So thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to great bi-weekly videos on topics like this. Or if you aren't feeling up to it, check out this animation, animated video, 